In this video, we will show how to define moving loads in S-Frame. Also, we will check on some of the results after running an analysis. For this example, I will define two crane runway girders. Then, we will model the crane wheels that move down these girders. Here I have a 1x1 one one meter grid. I go to Member Definition tool. Using the one joint method, I will create a 10 meters member with 15 links. So this will create 15 different elements. And in the X positive direction. So I just need to click one point and it will be generated automatically. The other girder will be five meters apart. Since this is one meter by one meter, I will just need to click here. Then I need to define my section I'm gonna use. So section properties, if I right click, go to a steel, I will select this section from the American steel table. Just need to click OK and close. It will be automatically assigned to my members. Then I can go and define the supports. I will create thick supports at the ends of these girders. Now that I'm ready with the geometry, I can go to the loads window and define my moving load case. Let's display the member numbers first. You can see this one goes from 1 to 15 and the other from 16 to 30. Please bear this in mind. I can define my new load case. I will call it moving load. Click OK. And I can define my load with the moving load tool. If I right click, I can start defining my patterns by clicking here. I will call it crane load. First axis will be for the distance, so starting at zero, we'll have a magnitude of 300 kilonewtons. And second wheel will be 1.5 meters with the same magnitude. I just need to add this pattern so you can start seeing your crane load. I click OK. It's going to ask you to save this DML file. I will suggest to save it in the same folder as your S-Frame model. And I just need to specify the member. So this first lane goes from member 1, remember 1 to 15. In the global set axis, uh, it will have an increment every 0.2 meters and you will see once we analyze the model. I just need to click add. This will add my first lane and to define my second lane which is uh, these members. These go from 16 to 30. Same increment. I keep the load orientation and I click add. Now I have my two lanes defined and I can click OK. Once it's defined, I can proceed with my analysis. If I click Analyze, I will run a linear static moving load. And remember, you can also combine this with load cases or load combinations. For this example, I will keep it simple and you just click OK. Then we'll go over each load case that is generated every 0.2 meters that we defined before. And I hit one key on my keyboard. I will go directly to the graphical results window. I can start displaying my members so you can have a look at them. Starting for member, starting from step one. And you will notice you have this. Each case I click, each time I click view next, I will see my loads that are 1.5 meters apart with an increment of 0.2 meters. You can check the results as well, such as deflections. You can see how the deflection is going. Well, we are moving. Maybe the set deflections. Also, you can do similarly with diagrams, such as moment. You can see how it's changing. 
Another way to view this better is with our collaboration and validation tool, SView. If you go run, SView, this will open SView automatically on your machine. And there it is. Here are girders. Uh, I select the object view. These are my sections. And if I click play, you can see how the load is moving across the girders. Of course, it's a bit exaggerated but you can scale it if you like or you can take screenshots to share with your colleagues and clients as well thank you for watching and for more tutorials and videos please subscribe to our youtube channel